Okay, welcome back. Now we're going to take a little bit of time to talk about the evolution of modeling, in effect, from dimensional modeling to data vault. And it's kind of an interesting concept to think that as we move from third normal form to dimensional concepts, there really has been an evolution moving towards the theories and the concepts of data vault and other things that are similar. So let's go ahead and take a look at the board where we've set up a little bit of a model to go through. Now we've started with a traditional kind of a view of a star schema from a dimensional modeling perspective. In this case, we have a fact around sales. And the fact around sales includes some metrics, for example, dollars amount sold, units sold, and that type of thing. This fact is then inclusive of a couple of dimensions that have their foreign keys embedded. So there's a foreign key for employee, foreign key for store, and a foreign key for customer in this case. So a very common case for dimensional modeling. Now, as we've started to use dimensional modeling for the purposes of warehousing, we said, well, we're going to take that dimension, in this case, dimension customer, and we're going to say this should be a conformed, conformed dimension customer. What does that really mean? Well, what it means is, is that, first of all, I'm going to be using type 2 dimensional techniques. Type 2 meaning I'm going to be uh, managing history, not overwriting, but including new time slices of data. Secondarily, because I want to have this now as part of a federated MART architecture for my warehouse, I want this to be the conformed instance for all information concerning customer. And much in the same way as with third normal form, then the concepts that we say that define the context of customer should be included in this table. Again, this is great, not, not a problem at all. But what happened in practice then is that a new set of sources come into my enterprise warehouse layer and they actually include some additional context that also helps to define the concept of customer. So what I do is, is I take that information and I attach it to this cu customer concept. That sounds great. Uh, what I've really done is said, because this is a conformed dimension, I've got additional attributes and context to define the concept of customer. I'm going to go ahead and bring those in. But then a little while later, again, this is an enterprise data warehouse, we're going to have some more information that comes in from yet another source. And this as well, I'm going to say, add to this table and continue to append that table to include more attributes and more context. And of course, you've already figured this out, uh, but we also are then going to run into another and another and another, right? So this is kind of a quick snapshot of dimensional modeling, immediate value, conformed dimensions, moving to enterprise warehousing. Enterprise warehousing initiative grows more and more uh, context from additional sources are loaded into the customer dimension and it continues to grow. This now ends up being where we start to say, I'm having a little bit of a problem. Because as I add that N set of context, it's becoming a little bit more difficult to, to work with it. Likewise, this is getting a little bit unwieldy to work with. So I want to see how can I move from this and, and in dimensional modeling, what we tend to do is to say, let's go ahead and split some of these out. Instead of just adding it all into one place, let's go ahead and split some of this information out. So I have a dimension over here that has this context data for customer, a dimension over here with this context, maybe some more in here, um, and I also have uh, this one here, of course. All right. Uh, not a problem, really, except that what I've kind of done now is I have multiple customer dimensions. Dim, cust, main, dim, cust, address, dim, cust, two, whatever, dim, cust, more. Okay? So I just have some additional mini dimensions that have been created. Um, and, and again, uh, now my problem is conformity. 
Well, if I'm concerned about conformity, I can actually create a new construct in here. I'll call this construct a factless fact, because it is a fact table, but there are actually no metrics to drive it. It's really just being used as a way to associate keys. And what I'm going to do is to say, I'm going to take the key from this table and insert it. The key from this table and insert it. Key from this table. Key from this table. And let's not forget the main one we started with, right? Over here. All right. So I create a factless fact that basically ties all these things together. And what is it tying together? It's tying together many dimensions that are all used to define different characteristics about the key customer. Right? So now they're all put together. Once I got to this state, and this is where the evolution comes in, because this is about where we are in a lot of places today, factless facts tying together multiple instances of, of uh, type 2 dimensions. But if I take it one step further, and again, this is evolution now, and say, you know, I took all the context out of here and I added more context into these many dimensions. What if I went back to the well, as it were, and took the rest of these and also pulled them out into their own dimension? Okay, take these, pull them out, and create now yet another mini dimension. Right. Dim cust uh, original, okay? Dim cust original with original data in it. And of course, in order to make that work now, I have to take the business key from that and also insert it into here, right? That's my business key in there. Now, bear with me for a minute. What remains in this table? Well, what remains in this table is just now the key itself. This business key that I started with, which was the customer key, is the only thing that remains in the original table. I took all the context and split it out. Fair enough. But what's happening with all these key structures is the key from this customer dimension, which has its own identity, is being migrated into this fact table. Okay. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and take this out of here now because we're only using the key for that table, so this is no longer necessary. Go ahead and take this out, take this part away for a minute. We can kind of see how we ended up here. What if, however, I took that key from the uh, remaining table, put it in here, the business key, business key. I took all these relationships and I reversed them. I took this business key and migrated it out instead of in to all these tables. And trying to do a quick cleanup get rid of the old ones, right? Think about what's happened here. Just a business key, multiple instances of context for that business key. The business key here migrates its key out to each one of these instances. And what have I done? Well, I think you've already figured out what we've done, right? We've now done Hub cust, hub customer with various satellites around it. So really, if you think about it, how far were we in the beginning now from moving towards the concepts of data vault? I would argue not very far. And that's how we got into other forms of modeling that are similar to data vault. Once we say, business key and context separated, migrate keys out, have multiple flexible ways of adding new things, this is where the benefits start to really be seen and be realized. Because now, as you can tell, when the next new source comes in that I hadn't thought of before, it's so easy to add. 
There's no problem adding new context. It's just almost instantaneous, right? So if I architect it this way to begin with, I have no problems. Let's go back for a quick summary. Um, I, again, this started out with a concept of an evolution in modeling, right? Evolving from the concepts of third normal form, applying concepts of dimensional, using dimensional for warehousing, enterprise warehousing constraints and requirements, causing some uh, rethinking on the modeling, and in this case, ending up with the concepts of vault. But are we done? We're not done. We now have to look towards the future, of course, for the next evolution in enterprise warehousing. What are the new requirements that come up? And of course, a lot of them have to do with agility, unstructured data, operational management con considerations. How do we now bring those things into the paradigms of the best modeling techniques? We'll have to contemplate that. But for now, we can see that there's a natural evolution towards EDW being supported by the vault concepts. Thank you. We'll see you next time.